Hello, my name is Catherine Sturrock and I bring to you the sugar button design moulds made in conjunction with Katie Sue Designs. I'm going to show you how to work with the birdhouse mould today. So just a little bit about the mould itself before we start the demonstration. So these are made of full grade silicon, so they're widely used by the cake decorating market as well as the general crafting market. These will last a lifetime. Um, they're made of fantastic grade silicon. They can go in the dishwasher, they can, you can use them for products that have been melted such as candle wax um, and also UTs, the embossing powders that you melt, hot glue, all sorts of different things. So we're going to work with this but I'll show you a couple of samples first because that will help you understand exactly what we can achieve using this mould. So the first sample I'm going to show you has been made using the air dry hearty clay. So if I just hold this up, we've got the little owl at the top which is another sugar buttons mould but this one in the centre is taken from part of the, the birdhouse mould. It does include the little birds, the little heart embellishment and there are other things within the mould as well which I'll, I'll use during the demonstration. So I've teamed it here with the sugar buttons snail which comes with the toast tools too so you can build up some fantastic little scenes um, use your imagination to make, make use of these moulds for all sorts of occasions. We did speak about the sugar craft market so I'm just going to bring one more little sample in for you to see because this has been made from fondant so you, you can see it works in exactly the same way with the colours um, how you put the fondant into the moulds exactly the same as you would with the clay but again great results. Right let's get to work with the mould itself. So you can see here in the centre we've got the main part of the birdhouse and then at the bottom here we've got a branch which also doubles up as a, a post for the birdhouse and then we've got some little leaves and birds and also some embellishments by means of the love heart and also some little flowers and smaller leaves. So to begin with what I'm going to do is just dust out the mould with a little bit of corn flour. The reason that we suggest this is because if you've washed the moulds out when you first get them or maybe clean them in soapy water or dishwasher, any little bits of moisture may make the, the clay stick. So if you give them a little bit of a dust out it will just take away any moisture within that mould. Just tap out any excess and you're good to go. So I'm going to make the main part of the birdhouse first and I've chosen to use different shades of blue for this. So what I'm going to do first is add the roof, which is this area, and also the base, and I'm going to put the little post in the same colour as well. So I'm looking at the, the area that I want to fill and looking at the shape, and because these are quite narrow, it makes it easier to roll out the clay first, rather than going with a ball of clay and trying to squash it in. If you shape the clay more or less to the shape that you want to fill, it will make the job a lot easier. I am going to use a tool which will help me. This is just one of my clay tools. It's very similar to a, a Dresden tool, which you can get from a sugar crafter's shop or the supermarkets often sell them as well. You can also use a ball tool or the end of a paintbrush or anything that you've got within your crafting stash that will work just to help you push the clay into the spaces within the mould itself. So I'm just feeding this around and pushing it down as I go. You don't need to worry about damaging the mould. You're not going to do that as long as it's it's a, a blunt instrument, nothing like a, a sharp craft knight, obviously you don't have to do it with that. But just push straight into the area that you want to fill. Now if you don't get enough clay straight away, very easy to top that up. So I tend to go right across first and then go with another layer. Because this is the roof of the house, what I'm going to do is add this layer and slope it to the back of the mould. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. I'm just going to lay that clay in there. So using the tool, I'm just going to push it so I can see where the line is, where the front of the birdhouse starts. But I'm sloping the clay to the back of the mould itself. This will make sure that when you take it out, that the roof itself is all the, the right colour. So any excess that's overhanging at the minute I can deal with as we clean and tidy up the clay before we release it from the mould. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now and do exactly the same at the bottom. So again I'm just rolling out a string of clay and I'm going to push that into place. Make sure it's well compacted down because you want to make sure that you get a proper base to your birdhouse. The same as the roof. So I'm just going to go over the top and just fill that up a little bit more. And again, just keep that away 
from the edge of where the wood grain effect starts so you've got a nice clean line that separates the two areas. And again you can slope the clay to the back of the mould. I'm going to pick it up now so you can see a little bit closer. So I'm filling to the back just there rather than keeping it level with the front of the mould. That will give me a nice base all in one colour. And then finally there is a little post so I'm going to use the same colour just to put in there as well. So roll it out, push it down, break it off where you need to and just make sure that's well pushed down. So I'll just remove those little bits of clay and then I'm going to work with my second colour which is a lighter shade of the blue. So I've mixed blue hearty clay into white and obviously depending on how much of the colour you actually use you'll get different tones and shades. So I'm going to use the clay now just to cover over the rest of that area. Any excess I can remove quite easily just by pulling it away with a finger or thumb. So I'm just going to start to push down. This is going to anchor the colour that went in first. So from the back it doesn't really matter that you're overlapping the colours because you're not going to see the back. It's going to be stuck down onto your project. One little area that we need to expose is where that little heart is because that's a post that sticks through. That will enable us to have a little cut out hole for our birdhouse so you can pull the clay away from there. Now I can see that I've got a little, little bit more clay than I need but what I'm going to do first is roll over the top with a rolling pin and just push down just because that helps me see how much clay I've got excess and it's filling any areas that may not have been quite topped up enough. So I can see now that I probably can lose a little bit of clay at the bottom there. So simply by scraping away with a, a thumb I can take away any excess that we don't need. I think that will be fine as it is. So we're going to do a tidy up and that's simply by using a fingertip just by pulling in away from the edge of the mould and that will give you a nice clean outline. So work all the way around including where the little heart is. So again I'm just pulling away from the, the post that shows through. So not very pretty from the back but this will look wonderful from the front and all you need to do now is start to flex the mould. If you find the clay is a little bit wet it may bend with the mould just let the clay air dry for a few minutes, literally just five minutes will be, probably be enough but you can see if I turn that to the side how that's just going to literally fall out. If I sit that onto the back of the mould and hold it up you can see all the detail of the wood grain there. And now the fun bit starts when we start to uh, decorate the whole birdhouse up, up. So you can use flowers and leaves, the little birds, whatever you like. So I'm just going to bring the mould back in. We've got this post or branch at the bottom, it could be a branch, you could colour that brown and maybe hang the birdhouse from it, so use a nice bow, piece of ribbon, or you could make a post. So I'm actually going to do that, I'm going to use the same pale blue, roll it out more or less of the shape that you see here, and then start to feed it in. Again you can add more clay if needs be, you don't have to do it all in one go. It's, I find it easier to put the, the main strip down the middle and then add the little branches afterwards. No rolling pin required here, you can just use your fingertips to push this into place. So there we are, you just want to fill up to the top so it's nice and level. Any areas that are a little bit low you can just top up with the clay. Press it down so it picks up the detail of the wood grain and then once you've done that and you're happy that that's nice and even, then again you can use a fingertip just around the edge to tidy that all up. So the moulds again very very flexible so you can see how that's just coming away it will literally fall out if I work around it once or twice it will just tip out. So there's our branch and you can see the wood grain effect there and of course you can use it either way up, it's your choice. You could cut this down, you can make it smaller, you can add on to it, you can do whatever you like. So I'm going to use it as a post for my birdhouse, so I'm going to attach the actual house at the top. So I'm just going to squash the top of the post, just to make it a little bit flatter, so that our birdhouse can just sit on the top. If you don't squash it down you'll find you end up with a lump underneath and it won't look as though it's sat very evenly. So just 
pressing the two clays together will be enough to make sure that they're stuck, you don't need to use any glue and then we're ready for trimming up. So I'm just going to move that to one side and show you some other areas of the mould that we can work with. So you've got two little birds, one that faces to the right and one that faces to the left. Now I think this would lend itself very well to an anniversary or a wedding, these could be lovebirds, they could be new baby again, new home, there's so many different ways that you could work with it. Think of Christmas as well, put snow effects on, lots of ideas that you can play around with. But let's go to one of the little birds. Again we're going to fill the clay into all these different areas so we're building up the colour as we go rather than going with one flat colour and then painting the detail on afterwards. So I'm using a little bit of pink into the wing area. So I'll just bring that up again so you can see. It's a little bit tricky because it's only a small area but we can see a little bit of pink clay has gone into there. Just again be careful not to fill it too much because you don't want that overspill of colour. And then we're going to go with white for the main bird. And we only need a very small amount of clay. So you can see I've more or less made the shape of it just by rolling it with fingertips there. But I do want to leave an area free to get some yellow in for the beak and the feet. So if you've got too much clay in there, again, easily, just to use a fingertip or thumb just to scrape away anything that you don't want and then we can tidy it all up. So for the area for the beak, I'm just using my tool just to pull away a little bit more from the edge there so I can clearly see where the beak is and clearly see where the feet are. So if I hold that for you to see, you can, I can now just pop a little bit of clay into those areas. So we'll do that now. I've used some of the yellow hearty clay mixed with white. The colours of the coloured clay are very, very strong. The pigment in it is very strong, so you need the tiniest amounts if you want the pale pastel colours. So the clay goes a long, long way. So I'm just pushing the yellow where the beak is. doesn't matter if I overlap onto the white now. As long as we get it into the right area, it doesn't matter if you cover some of the other colours from the back. And again, a little bit just into where the feet are and use the end of a paintbrush or a ball tool or a dressing tool or something just to push that in. So you get into all the little crevices of the mould. Finally, fingertip just to pat that down and then just working from the edge just to neaten it off. And then it's just a case of flexing that mould and lifting it out. So a very simple little bird but very, very effective. All he needs now is his eye. And for the eye, I'm just going to use the smallest amount of black clay. You could use a seed bead or you could just drop some paint in there. But I do actually like to go with this tiniest little ball of black clay. And I find if you roll that out with a fingertip and just break off a tiny amount with a cocktail stick and then roll with a fingertip, you'll get a tiny little ball that you can then pick up, use a cocktail stick as a tool and pop that into place. I'm going to bring one in that I made earlier that's already got one of the little birds on, on it so you can see different ways that you can sit these around. So you've got the post there, so a little bird sit on the post. You could sit one on one of the, the little extending branches or maybe on the roof of the birdhouse. You know, that's entirely up to you, so every project will look different. I think actually we probably will we'll sit, sit in there. I'm going to have to do it with a bit of glue because this one's dried. I think we'll sit that little bird there. So if the clay is wet, obviously the clay sticks to itself, you don't need any glue at all. But if it, if it has dried out or you make all the individual elements separately, the tiniest drop of PVA glue is enough to hold it. So I'll just put that into place there. So you can see how the birds work. And then we've got other embellishments like the heart, which is also part of the mould, so if you want to decorate the top of the birdhouse or just use it as a separate embellishment, that's entirely up to you. And then of course you've also got the leaves and the little flowers. So using whatever colour you like really, again I think this mint green works very well with the pastels and this is, this is the bright green uh, hearty clay that's been mixed with white and I can use this just to push into the areas of the different leaves. So we've got some that are quite highly detailed and they're not large but they're a little bit larger than the ones that we have here at the top. They're really small leaves and also you've got some little flowers there as well with some leaf, 
leaves just poking out from behind of one of the flowers. So entirely up to you how you build these up and how you use them. And of course there are lots of other sugar buttons and Katie Sue moulds out there um, with all sorts of flowers and embellishments on them. So you can mix and match all your different moulds. So there we are. Just use your imagination, build up your projects to suit yourself, but great fun doing them, very easy to use. I'm just going to bring back in that fondant icing cookie because I think that's just a, a lovely example of how you can work with this. And also just a reminder that you can use your powders, your inks and things like that if it's clay, just to add some extra detail onto the wood there. Um, little spots on the roof, that's another, uh, another good addition there. So once again, great fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you can join us with some of our other tutorials and hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.